B.F. Skinner is the pioneer in the, the world of operant conditioning and one of the leaders in behaviorism. And a lot of what I learned about in college had to do with using Skinner's methodologies for modifying behavior. And the way that we modify behavior or control someone else's behavior is through a system of rewards and consequences for their behavior. Now, the video game developers have become very well versed in some of Skinner, Skinner's methodologies. A few of the methodologies include using contingency schedules. A contingency is simply a rule for how rewards are given out. And a contingency schedule tells you when those rewards are going to be doled out. For example, if there's a fixed contingency schedule, that means that every 30 minutes, for example, you get a reward. Now, the video game developers have found that if you set it up in such a way that the players know that every 30 minutes they're going to get a reward, that means that their level of involvement in the game will have ups and downs. As the, as they get closer and closer and closer to the 30 minutes when they know they're going to get the reward, their behavior increases. So that behavior being how much they play the game increases. Once they get the reward, they know they're not going to get another one for 30 minutes, so their behavior decreases. So what the video game developers do is they simply set up a variable interval schedule, which means that the player doesn't know when they're going to get the reward. It could be in 30 minutes, it could be in 30 days. That means that the player will continue to play until they get that reward, and rather than having ups and downs in their rate of play, it will be fairly consistent. They do the same type of thing with the types of rewards that they get. Now, more importantly, they have also found out how to use avoidance. Avoidance is simply doing something to prevent something bad from happening. And actually, um, John Hobson, the individual that came up with this basic theory for how to develop these addicting video games, went so far as to use a picture of a rat in a Skinner box when he wrote his article on how to develop these addicting video games. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the rat in the Skinner box, the rat is given a very mild shock every 30 seconds. A shock that they say is equivalent to what you get if you rub your feet across the, um, the uh, carpeting and touch a doorknob. Same type of thing. Well, there's a lever in this box that if the rat pushes that lever, it will prevent the shock. It doesn't take very long for the rat to learn that if it presses the lever on a regular basis, every 30 seconds, it never gets a shock. And the rat will stand there and push that lever every 30 seconds to prevent that shock until the rat dies because it's trying to avoid that neg negative stimulus. Well, video game developers have discovered that, first of all, this type of research is not tied to any particular species. So if you can use this avoidance type of behavioral training on a rat, you can use it on a dog, you can use it on a bird, you can use it on a human being. It works the same regardless of what the species is. So, how do we work this into a video game? Very simple. If the gamer does not come back to the game frequently enough, they start to lose some of the things that they have gained throughout the game. For example, if they built a big mansion. If they don't come back and visit their mansion, the mansion will deteriorate. Farmville. I've never played it, but I have been told that if you don't come back and tend to your farm on a regular basis, your crops die. So again, if we're looking at video games that are based on a subscription, they're based on you have to pay to continue to come back and tend your crops. You have to pay to continue to come back and maintain this mansion that you've worked to use. It's a very, very easy way for the video game developers to get you addicted to the game, gets you keep, to keep coming back, 
And they don't even have to create any new content. They don't even have to give you a quest or anything to do. All they have to do is say, okay, you worked really hard to, to plant this crop. Now if you don't come back and take care of it, it's all gonna die and all your hard work is gonna be lost. So they find a way to actually make our brains choose because at any given moment, we choose to continue playing the game versus engaging in real life activities. And if they're setting things up using behavioral modification in such a way that the mental reward, the reward that our mind believes is real, is more powerful than what we can get from external stimulus, going to play basketball with one of our friends versus staying here and maintaining our crop in Farmville, then they've accomplished what they want. They've gotten us to stay there, make that choice, stay in front of that game, keep giving them our credit card number, keep buying whatever it is that they want us to buy. Another example that I read about um, of this is a game where you basically have to buy a key to unlock a treasure chest. And the way that you buy the key is with real world money. So again, you give them that credit card. So rather than using a fixed interval that says for every five treasure chests you open, you get a reward, they don't want to do that because after five treasure chests, all right, you might open five more, but eventually you're going to get tired of opening it because you know every five you're going to get one and you just get tired of it. But they use a variable interval and so you don't ever know. It could be this one, it could be the next one, it could be five from now, it could be three in a row. You have no idea. So you keep buying and buying and buying keys and opening and opening and opening treasure chests. Very mundane task, really no purpose to it, but they are using shaping to create addicted behavior. They're using shaping to slowly create a situation where you will sit there and engage in the same repetitive behavior over and over and over to try to get this little reward out of the treasure chest. The other thing that they do, which is ingenious but pretty unethical in my opinion, is they have a competition and whoever buys the most keys in the day gets a prize for that day. So now you not only have someone who will sit there for hours and hours and hours buying these keys to try to open the treasure chest, but they can see that someone else out there has bought a thousand keys. Well, I have to buy a thousand and one so that I can get the reward for the day. So if each key is a dollar, it's a thousand and one dollars that I just spent today to get something that's not even tangible, not even something that has any significance in the real world, not even something that moves my life forward or has any benefit to me or humanity in any way. All it does is line the pockets of the video game developers. And again, I find that very unethical. And I, I would imagine that Skinner would agree that that is not an ethical way to use the strategies that he discovered over years of research. and and that others have developed even further and you know that those of us are tr that are trained to use try to use in a beneficial way